Madam President, thank you very much for your words and you, Provost, for your words as well. And I want to thank you on behalf of all my fellow honorees for the degrees you've bestowed on us today. Fellow graduates, my wife Nan and I are deeply honored to join you and your proud parents on this happy day. We offer each one of you our warmest congratulations. But I must admit that I am a bit apprehensive because I know you're all looking at me and thinking there is no way he's going to be as good as Bono. <laughs> and, and, and you're right. <laughs> My good friend, the lead singer of U2, is a hard act to follow. <laughs> Fellow graduates, you have had a precious opportunity at this great university. You have explored the realm of ideas, ideas about what is true and what is false, what is right and wrong, what works and what does not. As you graduate, a new phase of your life begins. The time has come to put ideas into practice. Indeed, the story of your lives will be the story of your struggle to be true to the ideas you believe in. It is the same for individual nations and for our world. As Bono said last year, the United States of America is not just a country. It is an idea. It is the idea described in the Declaration of Independence which Benjamin Franklin and others signed here in Philadelphia, that all human beings are created equal and have inalienable rights. The United Nations is an idea too. It is not just a building in Manhattan or a piece of international machinery. It embodies a conviction on the part of peoples everywhere that we live on a small planet and that our safety, our prosperity, our rights, indeed our freedoms are indivisible. Your grandparents' generation learned this hard lesson. I hope some of them are here with you today to share in this proud moment. In the 1920s and 1930s, Many in this country thought that Europe's problems were for Europeans to solve, and that dangers in Asia did not matter to the United States. Pearl Harbor proved that idea wrong in practice, while the horrors of the Holocaust proved it utterly wrong as a matter of ethical responsibility. You, the class of 2005, have learned this lesson anew in your own time. You have seen how a poor and misgoverned country, Afghanistan, became an incubator of terrorism with devastating consequences here in the United States. And you have seen on your television screens some of the terrible indignities suffered by your fellow men and women from war, terrorism, tyranny, injustice, hunger, poverty, ignorance, and disease. When they were your age, your grandparents, along with their allies in many other nations, made great sacrifices to defend freedom and restore world peace. They called their alliance the United Nations. Their victory in 1945 led to the establishment of the United Nations as a standing organization 
for global security. The United Nations Charter is one of the milestone documents in the history of humankind and in the history of freedom. It speaks of the equal rights of men and women, of nations large and small, and of a world of social progress and better standards of life in larger freedom. To understand what those words in larger freedom mean, we should recall the vision of Franklin Roosevelt, who did more than any other person to bring the United Nations into being. He spoke of a world in which all human beings would enjoy political and religious freedom, as well as what he called freedom from want and freedom from fear. <clears throat> in those, in other words, in other words, democracy, peace, and decent standard of living should be the birthright of every person. And thus, human rights, security, and development taken together make up the idea of larger freedom. After all, a young man your age who has HIV AIDS, who cannot read or write, and who lives on the brink of, star <clears throat> on the brink of starvation is not truly free, even if he can vote to choose his rulers. Equally, a young woman your age who lives in the daily shadow of civil war or who has no say in the way her country is run is not truly free, even if she has enough money to feed herself and her family. 